This is Saturday Morning Mysteries. And we're your hosts, Alexis and Grace. Good morning and welcome to another spooky Halloween episode of Saturday Morning Mysteries, where we are your hosts. I'm Mm -hmm. Grace. And I'm Alexis. And Alexis will be telling us a story today for our just October arc. Yes, this mm-hmm. was our second week, second uh, weekend of October. Yep. In which, uh, so usually if you're just tuning in for October right now, we do whole uh, arcs based on series of shows uh, in which we retell, revise, remix the cartoon <laughs> crimes um, as mm-hmm. true crime stories. But for October, in spirit of Halloween, uh, we are just doing episodes of any classic cartoon in our repertoire (laughs) that uh, has to do with Halloween. Yes, Mm -hmm. classic repertoire. Um, And so uh, Alexis will be telling us some type of story that's based on Halloween today. Something about Halloween. An animated show? That talks about Halloween, yes. Um, And uh, boy, oh boy, Grace and I have been chatting before hitting the record button for today's episode, (laughs) and she knows how excited I am to do this episode today. Because it's going to be a doozy, but it's going to be a fun doozy, a a foozy, foozy, foozy. Yeah, I guess if you're British. Uh, so <laughs> today I'm going to bring it back and I'm actually going to, Grace, I'm going to take this podcast back to where it all began, back to where it all started with the Scooby-Doo show. Yay! <laughs> Yay! We are back. We're going to talk about a Halloween themed episode Yay. of Scooby-Doo. Oh uh, we're going my coffee. To fall- I'm so excited. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, right? It's good news. It's it's worth spilling the coffee over. Yes. So I'm gonna jump right in because there are a lot of spookiness, a lot of a lot of scares, and a lot of history that we've got to talk about today that the writers decided to integrate into the story. So, as I noted before, today's episode it actually takes place on Halloween night. But interestingly enough, it takes place on Halloween night in Salem, Massachusetts. Ooh. Ooh, Okay. And on this night in particular, it is a dark and stormy night, and we just see lightning, thunder, crashing everywhere. In the local cemetery, though, there is a man. (laughs) Yes, it goes straight to the cemetery after the storming. Anyway, so in this local cemetery in Salem, Massachusetts, a man named Gar Mooney, the cemetery's caretaker, mm. he's digging a deep hole um, as strikes of lightnings flash overhead. So I guess he's doing some work yeah, uh, like late job. at night. Uh, yeah, like- is, I, I guess it's caretaker's job to dig holes at like night on the night before you know, Halloween. Yeah, there's a lot of deaths. He's got to. <laughs> Work over to catch up. Demands high, unfortunately, <laughs> in uh, Salem, Massachusetts. So Gar Mooney, by the way, he's like this kind of shorter, old, frail looking guy. And uh, he's got this kind of cool bucket hat on with like gray hair kind of peeking out behind it. So just a little description of him, older and frail. And interestingly enough, he's digging this hole only a few grave sites away from the grave of one Melissa Wilcox, a woman who lived from 1733 to 1778. And even more interestingly, Mrs. Wilcox's headstone has an inscription and like a, a transliteration of the symbol at the mm-hmm. bottom of it, <laughs> literally reading out which. <laughs> Oh, like, very clear. Uh, but hilariously, in reality, this symbol, so it is um, it's a double cross with an infinity sign at the base of it, which okay. is actually known as the Leviathan cross or Grace, a callback to your episode from last week, Satan's cross. Whoa, what? <laughs> yeah. So it was actually used by Anton LaVey in the, sa- in the satanic Bible, essentially to like crawl tr- 
troll, troll Troll. Christians. Yes. Troll Christians. Like, haha, that's your cross. This is our cross now because apparently it was also created by the Knights Templar. So a callback to yet another, I believe our very first episode. So yeah, this one is tying in a lot of Saturday morning mysteries. This is amazing, (laughs) right? So you've got this uh, Leviathan cross or Satan's cross, but they can't actually call it that because this is a children's show. Because they didn't want to get banned like Darkwing Duck did. (laughs) Darkwing Duck, they were very close to it, but the suits were probably like, can we say that this means witch instead? (laughs) Yes. So that is at the bottom of this headstone of Melissa Wilcox's or on Melissa Wilcox's grave. And so we see another flash of lightning strike uh, in the cemetery. And as it you know, goes away, a ghostly witch appears over Melissa's grave site. And it's just evil. She's evilly laughing and has these like very creepy piercing eyes and has very long classic, you know, modern witch apparel or like get up on long green flowing hair, purple witch's hat and cloak. Classic. And even <laughs> classic and these piercing yellow eyes. And interestingly enough, I think she actually also has fangs. That's a new addition to the, the witch, witch get up. Get up. But, you know, whatever they had to do to make her seem a bit spookier, I suppose. Okay. So Mooney sees, Gar Mooney sees the witch standing over the grave and he just immediately books it out of the hole he's digging and runs back into town yelling, oh my God, she's back. She's back. Oh, she's, she's returned. Back. She's okay. back. And he runs directly to a man named to the home of a man named Squire Marley. Okay. And this guy is apparently like probably like a judge or like a town councilman or alderman or something. He's literally only described as like a town leader, but he also is able to like round up the town and lead the town too, as we'll talk about later. So Gar Mooney runs to his house. And he's like banging on the door, like waking him up in the middle of the night, saying that she's risen. Melissa Wilcox has risen from her grave and all of this. And uh, Squire Marley, he like opens the door kind of like maybe in his PJs or something like, (laughs) stop babbling. What are you talking about? Like, what are you doing here, first of all? And who who has risen? What are you talking about? Why are you covered in dirt? Also, by the way, why are you not at work, sir? You're supposed to be working. We pay you good get money. Back to the hole. Uh, get back to your hole. So uh after Squire Mooney or Squire Marley stops Mooney, Mooney like gets his nerves and everything. And he says, Melissa Wilcox, the witch of Salem, she's back. And she swore that she would, you know, get revenge after they burned her at the stake 200 years ago. So Before we dive deeper into today's episode, let's talk a little bit about the Salem witch trials. Yes, yes, yes. And also how witches became such a prominent part of Halloween. Sorry, go. Ooh, no, I was just going to say, like, I'm so excited to talk about this. And also, Mm -hmm. inherently, I'm on Melissa's side already. Already? It's like, I know nothing about this girl or what's going to happen, but Mm -hmm. she's a witch. I'm with it. They burned her at the stake. She probably did not deserve it because as we will discuss, most people who did die or were executed during the Salem witch trials did not deserve it. Um, And yeah, Grace, we kind of talked about this before recording. You probably know more about the witch trials than I do. So we're going to have some fun talking about this and please feel free to fill in any gaps that I miss. I'm just doing like our, you know, half researched Mm -hmm. (laughs) basis on this. So (laughs) per the Wikipedia page and history.com, two sources there actually toss toss. The Salem Witch Trials, they were essentially just a a series of hearings and prosecutions of people who were accused of witchcraft in colonial Massachusetts between February 1962 and May 1963. I mentioned earlier, this area of Massachusetts is now known as Danvers, the town of Danvers or the city of Danvers. And during the trials, over 200 people were accused, 30 were found guilty, 19 were hanged to death, one man was pressed to death, and at least five others died in jail, aka like without trial or while awaiting trial. Mm. So before even having like, you know, being committed uh, or being, you know, classified as guilty, they're like, they died in jail. So 
considered right. one it's pretty bad it's pretty bad because it is considered one of colonial america's most notorious cases of mass hysteria and i mm. think it's also one of the deadliest witch hunts in the history of colonial north america but it should be noted that there were other towns outside of salem that were also doing similar mm-hmm. things like go, like witch, witch hunts were going on before the salem witch trials in fact even in like 15th 15th, I can't talk today, 15th century <laughs> Europe, like medieval Europe, anywhere from like 100,000 to 200,000 people were accused of these crimes of witchcraft. And like mm-hmm. about half of those were apparently executed. So anywhere from like 50,000 to 100,000 people were executed for crimes of witchcraft. Damn Europe, we only killed 30. <laughs> yeah, geez. Like, get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> 30,000? Jeez. It's like a... Oh, anyway. Dramatic. Very grim. Yeah, very grim, very murderous. So essentially, this is all to say, though, that the witch hunt craze and hysteria was long established before the Salem witch trials began in North America. Also necessary to note that the overwhelming majority of the accused and convicted in Salem were women. It was like mm. just shy of 80% of those 200 people. Oh, whoa. Because, yeah, so because Puritan culture, which Puritans were the primary faith group engaged in the Salem witch trials in particular, and their culture viewed women as inherently sinful and more susceptible to damnation than men were. <laughs> Damn women, they're this always why- out there causing men to sin. <laughs> it's like the story of her Adam ankles. And you, I guess. Yeah, how dare she? Did you see <laughs> Melissa's the apocalypse? Thing? <laughs> the fangs came afterwards. That was oh, that was part okay. of the eternal damnation. Mm-hmm after she had already crossed over. (laughs) But yeah, she did have her ankle showing now that I think about it. That cloak was maybe not long enough. A witch! A witch! Bad (laughs) hat! (laughs) mistake! But, um, so essentially though, women kind of gave into this Puritan ideology, right? In this like very Mm -hmm. conservative culture. Like they too believed that they were more susceptible to sin and more susceptible to damnation than men were. So it was kind of easy for them to be coerced into confessing mm. to crimes of witchcraft because they were like, oh, you know, you're right, Mr. Ma- man leading the town. I didn't <laughs> pray five times yesterday. I must be aware. <laughs> like they would give in to these things, unfortunately. But What is even more interesting, and you kind of touched on this a bit a second ago, Grace, is that the witch trials, like all of the death and violence really could have just been chalked up to like neighborhood disputes, a dash of racism and like shunning of Puritan social norms, i.e. women just like speaking out of turn, not wanting to have children (laughs) or like just generally having fun. Like, oh, that woman is (laughs) dancing. She must be a witch. (laughs) Because it's like she's making a man think terrible, thought terrible, whatever thoughts. Oh my God. So he's like, oh my God, she's corrupted me. She is a witch. <laughs> but the dash of racism, though, very interestingly, was embodied by the town's claims against Tituba, yes. who was an enslaved woman who was the very first person actually to be accused of witchcraft during the witch trials in Salem. And so Tituba, she was brought to colonial Massachusetts from Barbados by a minister, no less, named Samuel Paris. And although she did confess to witchcraft when she was questioned by the authorities, which led to her imprisonment, it was later found out that her enslaver, the minister, Samuel Paris, beat her into confessing to the acts of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. So like... Like even the local colonial, Mm -hmm. the local, the colonizers, (laughs) he too was coerced into confessing to these acts and these quote unquote crimes. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of historians think, or at least historians who have little snippets on Wikipedia and (laughs) history.com, history.com, they believe that ethnic differences between the colonists and Tituba likely made her a target for these allegations. But naturally, even after the witch trials ended and the mass hysteria subsided, Western culture remained fascinated with witches and witchcraft, and they eventually became like these prominent characters, typically villains, and a number of works of literature, like 
stuff by the Brothers Grimm out of Germany, mm. like Hansel and Gretel and Snow White. And then, of course, L. Frank Baum's wonderful Wizard of Oz, among yeah. many others. So at that point, around like, you know, later in the 1800s, early 1900s, witchcraft started to become more of like a symbol for the spooky season and less of like, mm. oh my God, something we need to murder people for. And more of something that's like, oh, a scary costume to haunt people on Halloween with. Mm. So God, how speaking, pissed are all those people who got murdered? You got murdered for nothing. It's like uh, literally cultural appropriation. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got murdered because I got this. murdered for this shit. Like <laughs> hopefully people practicing Wicca today, I like have the numbers of some of these appropriators anyway we'll get to that <laughs> later so speaking though of how it became such like a, a big you know costume cliche for halloween mm. the cliche image of a witch during the halloween season it includes like a broom and a tall pointed hat we all right. have seen this and are familiar with this but this was like nothing like what at least the witches during the Sa witches during the Salem witch trials looked like at all. They weren't flying around on brooms right. wearing pointy hats. Apparently, though, the getup was inspired by the attire and household utensils, like a broom, of poor commoners during 15th century medieval Europe, who oh. happened to also often be ones accused of paganism and witchcraft. So witch hunters oh. were like oh, look at their pointy, like, beaten up hats that they wear out here. And look at their brooms. I bet they're hiding oh. wands in those brooms. <laughs> Why? You know, whatever. Um, I should say a million. It's a stretch, but whatever. <laughs> so, again, tying in some uh, some of uh, stuff that you said in last week's episode about paganism being a big <clears throat> influence on mm -hmm. Halloween. It's obvious, like, natural that this sort of get up then was carried into the Halloween tradition as ah, well. And that yeah. is now how we see witches in popular culture today, kind of at least. Yeah. But it's the classic witch. The classic witch, exactly. Because, I mean, look, you've got, like, from Tituba to Hermione to Elphaba and even, like, Sabrina, the teenage <laughs> witch. <laughs> yes. The story and culture of witches throughout history and pop culture has come a very long way from violent and murderous with no due process at all <laughs> to somewhat, like, heroic and courageous and kind of, like, entertaining, I guess. Mm. And witches are still around today, as I mentioned before, practicing one of a variety of forms of like Wicca mm -hmm. or other modern witchcraft practices I don't know anything about. But hey, maybe <laughs> this is us reaching out to our Wicca hey. demographic. If any of y'all are out there, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey. <laughs> what's going on? Sorry that all your like ancestors were murdered. Yeah. Glad you're you know? still alive. Glad you are still alive. I uh, I hope that you have no bad blood in your veins, no sense of revenge or anything like that. Um, like today's villain, Melissa Wilcox, unfortunately does. Oh, look at that transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn. Mm -hmm. She's a witch. Burn her. She's a witch. Burn her. Oh, it's my. Huh? How the tables have turned in your eyes, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, oh, shit. Who oh, no. Whose side am I on? <laughs> No, what? Because we we love you guys. We love oh, no. we love our our witch demographic and our witch wizard. demo. <laughs> yeah, it's the lost demo. We we didn't forget about y'all. We got the mafia. We've got witches. We appeal to all audiences. Here. Oh yeah, yeah, baby, <laughs> nice. Wow. So, okay. So, all right, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming, though, and talk oh, about Melissa how Wilcox. Scooby, uh, Melissa Wilcox, so how in the hell are Scooby and the gang going to solve a mystery about the resurrection of this witch in Salem on Halloween night? So, we see Mystery Inc. making their way down a dark road in none other than the Mystery Machine on their way, driving into Old Salem, and the gang mentions that their friend Arlene had recently called Velma, telling her something about Salem and that the old, that Arlene's old family house was just uh, passed down to her through an inheritance. But at that moment, Velma said that the line went dead before she could get much more out. God. Which is funny because, I mean, kind of sounds like they had a nice conversation. Like, that's a lot of information to learn about someone. It's not like you just... <gasps> 
call someone and say, Hey, Velma, by the way, I just inherited a house. Oh no, my phone line went dead. Oh, no, bye. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, though. <laughs> Uh, so Shaggy reminds the gang, though, that it's Halloween and that he and Scooby want to go trick or treating, nice. even though they're like over 16, probably, but whatever. <laughs> but, Fr- but Fred reminds them that first they need to check on Arlene and make sure she's OK, and then they can go trick or treating afterwards. Okay. So meanwhile, we see the grave robber, hole digger, perhaps cemetery caretaker, <laughs> Gar Mooney walking with Squire Marley back to the cemetery to show him where he saw Melissa Wilcox's Mm. ghost or reincarnated body. And so as they approach her grave, yet again, they hear more evil laughter coming from her grave site. And they look up and see her ghost, the, the ghostly witch standing over the headstone, yelling out that she will have her revenge So she is not happy, folks. (laughs) She is looking for revenge. And Squire Marley at this point, he's seen it all. He's like, all right, I've seen what I need to see. (laughs) Okay. Go round up the townsfolk right now for an emergency uh, meeting. So he sends Gar Mooney off to do this. And meanwhile, the Squire, he actually makes his way. Excuse me. He makes his way to uh, the home of Arlene Wilcox Mm. and starts like hammering up signs with the inscription of the Leviathan cross, like notifying the town that she is a witch because they noticed that this witch of Melissa Wilcox looks just like Arlene. Oh my God, they have the same last name. They're related. They do. They are related. That's the other thing. So they're like, okay, it's she looks like Arlene and they have the same last name. I'm going to guess that she's possessed by this witch. Oh my God. Which ties in to Mystery Inc. being like, oh my God, her phone line cut out out of nowhere. What happened to her? So I would also like to posit here that Melissa Wilcox, the the OG witch, her Mm. revenge is going to be brutal because let's remember the Salem witch trials ended in 1693, Uh but Melissa Wilcox, according to her headstone, was killed in 1778, long, long after the witch trials ended. So she was probably some like random lone victim of some case that spurred up in the area based on like some seriously messed up accusations or or maybe her like her mom was accused as a witch and they were like you look like your mom. (laughs) You're a witch too. Like they're doing that just keeps going back and back and forth. Yeah, exactly. So anyway at this point, we see the we see Mystery Inc. approaching Arlene Wilcox's house, and they see Squire Marley out there hammering signs these with the inscription of the Leviathan he Cross just have all those around. Sitting around. I guess. <laughs> now he like real quick gets a marker out, and just like starts putting them on every piece of plywood he can He's find. Like, this is Gar Mooney's time to shine. Like getting out his like witchcraft like set up. The town is prepared for this. For this. <laughs> the town is prepared. Yeah, he's so like old timey voice. And everything. He is actually well, yeah. Um, <laughs> I should have. He- yeah, he does. Yeah, I was really trying to imitate the way he sounds right there. So <laughs> I should I should have described the way he looks. Um, he does have like white hair and like the thick sideburns, and has like the what do you call it? Like the ruff or the ruffle thing that like. The, oh my god! Like, cloth scarf coming out and like a rider's jacket, like a long yeah. riding coat and boots. Like he straight in the, like a long brim hat too. Like he straight up looks like a Puritan, like town leader. And also Incredible. like when they get to the town hall, it's like a cat, a log cabin. So like, what year is this? <laughs> yeah, is this, is this actually the witch trials? <laughs> it truly is. Except oh, Salem. 1793 i don't know i don't know the the writers were just trying to like throw in whatever like fun you know references References. they could yeah Yeah, without with being like super ambiguous about the actual timeline here yep so anyway mystery inc they get out of the the mystery machine and squire marley immediately is like you you guys need to turn back you can't be here the wilcox property is accursed (laughs) he actually said it's a (laughs) cousin 
<laughs> but Fred is like, hey, dude, we're just looking for our friend Arlene Wilcox. And Marley's like, no, she has been possessed by the Witch of Salem. Y'all need to go. But Damn. Fred, he speaks on behalf of the entire team. And he's like, we're not leaving until we see Arlene, a.k.a. We did not drive all the way from Coolsville to Salem, Massachusetts. Right, like 28 hours of driving. <laughs> Which, by the way, when they get out of the car and make their way to the front door, because they clearly like ignore Squire Marley and keep making their way into the house. Yes. Yeah. They do have luggage with them. So (laughs) they. We're moving in. We're we're coming in, guys. So they make their front, they make their way to the front door and they're all carrying their bags and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, like they've actually planned a nice trip to say to Salem, I guess. This is, what, this is what kids do for Halloween. I guess they take road guess. trips to go see a friend cross country. <laughs> so Arlene, she opens the door for mystery Inc. And she seems extremely panicked. And she's like looking around because obviously this creepy old man, Squire Marley is like hanging yeah. signs saying that she's an accursed witch around her property. Yeah. And she lets them in and inside the home, it is like immaculate, by the way, like this old timey, I guess, kind of like Victorian looking. I don't I can't. I, although that was after I don't know, it's got beautiful woodwork and wood trim along the fireplace and these beautiful drapes and like massive chandeliers and antique furniture and these huge portraits. And remember, Arlene has just inherited this house mm. and she is like the same age as the folks <laughs> in the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually like a huge so she, tragedy. That means her like parents are dead. Oh, like, so dead. Yeah. And like all her grandparents, all of her family, like she's the last person living. <laughs> last Wilcox. Yikes. It's not funny, but it's like <laughs> this, this, this very dark. Like, it's like the this darkest is, part of this episode. Dark, and it's like, this is actually very serious shit that's happening right now. <laughs> she has no guardian um, anymore. Like, yeah. And, and I'm so glad that you're saying this because it's going to make the things that happen later in this episode seem even more urgent and okay. dangerous for her Great. and for Mystery Inc., right? Great. So they make their way in, they're getting settled, and Fred asks Arlene what's going on, particularly why that man out there warned them to go away and called Arlene a witch. Uh, yeah, good <laughs> so- question. This is news to us. So she explains that uh, Squire Marley saw the old witch of Salem rise from the grave, the witch of uh, Melissa Wilcox, mm. and that she and that he swore the witch looked exactly like Arlene. And <laughs> Vilma cuts her off, like, so he thinks the witch has possessed your body. Is that right? And Arlene's like, yes, Vilma, that's right. <laughs> like, damn, let her finish, Vilma. She's getting there. Anyway. She is so, panicked right now. She, yeah, exactly. She's she, through her, it. Her mind is racing. And truly yeah. it is. Like, she, you can see she's, like, looking around. She didn't look disheveled, but she clearly is, like, high, strong, and a bit anxious at the moment. Mm. And so Arlene goes on to explain that she is, like we mentioned before, a direct descendant of Melissa Wilcox. And she tells the gang about the legend of this witch. Um, as I mentioned before, kind of as Gar Mooney said, she was burned at the stake for witchcraft and said to, she said to seek her revenge on Halloween, 200 years after her death, which is this night here. Perfect. Of course, classic, good time to visit Mr. Inc., I guess. <laughs> So Fred assures Arlene that she's nothing to worry about. Mystery Inc. is there to help. They're going to solve the mystery. They're going to protect her. And as they continue to get settled into the Wilcox house, we see the witch of Melissa Wilcox kind of like lurking about outside as thunder and lightning are just bellowing and flashing out there. And so she she's able to sneak into the house oh, and no. she actually in classic Scooby-Doo fashion, she goes straight up to Shaggy and Scooby's room yep. where hilariously they are actually trying on Halloween costumes because they are still committed to getting their trick or treating <laughs> in. OK, their priorities are straight as their friend has clearly just lost her entire family and is in here at this massive house and now is being accused of Kiss witchcraft in a town of religious zealots. Uh, yeah, let's go trick or treating. She's probs. OK, <laughs> yeah, fuck her. So Scooby, coincidentally, though, happens to be dressed up as a witch, too. Like that's the, the costume. Scooby, read the room. Read the room. 
Come on, not bro. cool, not cool. But it was Me actually too. Shaggy who brought the costume for him. So even more unacceptable because I'd be like, all right, Scooby, you're a dog. You don't know what a witch even is. Shaggy, though, you're a living, breathing human. Wait, read yeah. the room. <laughs> actually read the room. So as they're trying on these costumes, hilariously kind of Melissa Wilcox screen or like sneaks up on them and uh, like... <laughs> They just all freak out, but she like ducks out of there, peels back and leaves the, the, uh, the house and the rest of the gang and Arlene, they come to see what's wrong. But as I said, she's already escaped. So Shaggy says that they saw the witch confirming that she is resurrected, but also Mm. confirming that she does look just like Arlene, which Uh makes Arlene even more terrified. She's like, oh, my God, no, no. So she does actually look like me. This is not good. Something's wrong. Like someone's going to kill me. So meanwhile, (laughs) Vilma... Should we like it, like investigate the murder of her whole family? Like also, which oh, that might be some good wild speculation for the end. Okay, okay, yeah. Oh, that's a good. You just made me think of something. That's great. So anyway, we'll get to that later. So, great. in the middle of uh, Arlene having this like increased state of panic, Vilma's like, "Hey, everyone, look over here!" <laughs> like Arlene, you shut up for a second. I found the clue. <laughs> <laughs> Which, like, I guess kind of kind of helpful, though. Uh, apparently, there is, like, some kind of bubbling, sizzling, dark liquid that has been left on the rug at the door where the witch was standing when she okay. scared Shaggy and Scooby. So at that moment, Arlene and Shaggy, they turn and look out the window in their bedroom, and they notice that the witch is actually running away from the house and back towards the graveyard. They can see her, and she's, like, cackling in the night as she's going. Of course, classic. And so the gang at this point decides to split up. Fred and Vilma, they decide to follow the witch and investigate. And I guess Daphne's like, okay, I'll go with you. And Shaggy and Scooby, they don't want to go anywhere near here. They're like, oh, you said she's running towards the graveyard? We're going to stay here, actually. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll watch Arlene. We'll protect her, make sure no crazy people come, Great. like, bust in the house, right? So on their way out, Fred tells them, all right, be safe. Don't open the door for anyone at all. Correct. Correct. Good advice, <laughs> but yes. very soon after Fred, Daphne, and Vilma take off in the mystery machine, Shaggy and Scooby are, like, spooked out by this, like, old house with, like, branches, like, scraping up against the window and stuff. Classic, whatever. And they make a last-minute decision to just, like, book it out of the house and join the rest of the gang. And they don't even, by the way, tell Arlene. They just leave her. They just leave her. Yeah. They just leave. Arlene needs to get new friends. (laughs) She does. These people are not really... I mean, I guess they are trying to solve it, but, like, no one's watching her. (laughs) And so they're trying to catch up with the mystery machine, Shaggy and Scooby are. But Fred is, like, flying down this long, winding driveway in the dark, gloomy night in this new Great. area, by the way, like they don't know where they are. He's driving. Actually, it's it's notably dangerous how he reckless. is driving. I would just like think, yeah, reckless. I would just like to point that out. And so Shaggy, he's like, we'll never we're not gonna catch up to them. Fred's driving way too fast. And so they decide to find a shortcut to uh, to the graveyard. Again, which, a place again, they don't know. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so they find Great. themselves running through hilariously because they don't know where they are they're running through a pumpkin patch oh cute and like destroying half of the pumpkin oh. as they're like cl- carelessly and clumsily just trying to navigate this shortcut that poor pumpkin farmer who's probably <laughs> awake the next day there's been like, a witch scare and now his entire livelihood is patch. destroyed destroyed he probably was like oh my god i'm gonna be able to sell so many of these on halloween day i can't wait or november 1st people are getting ready for like their pumpkin pie and everything i'll finally be able to buy my kids the bicycle for christmas they've always wanted poor timmy he can get that knee surgery he's always (laughs) needed Uh, not anymore sorry timmy we're finally going to eat more than potatoes for dinner tonight (laughs) <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby oh, yes. just like destroying the whole harvest. <laughs> Great. Anyway, so 
they um they all make it to the cemetery they reconvene there and <laughs> sorry this is very random and funny i had to put this i had to note this in the script because this is like halfway through the episode at this point mm-hmm. and daphne has only had like one line <laughs> I just found it very funny as I was watching because um, she she says something here at this point. And I was like, holy shit, that's the first time I've heard Daphne talking like forever. <laughs> I had to like rewind it. I was like, Daphne, I forgot she was even here. Oh so, so anyway, as they all reconvene in the uh, in the cemetery, they see the ghostly witch running throughout and Daphne goes, there she goes no shit we we're here we see her too so it's also funny that that's like her one line in like a 10 minute period (laughs) i feel like she like got to the house and was like oh this is all you inherited (laughs) (laughs) i'll keep my mouth closed before i offend you (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) um so let's see here. The gang, I'm sorry, just laughing about Daphne still. The gang, they, so they see the witch. She's running through the cemetery, evilly laughing, standing over her headstone, which by the way, this is all she's been doing the entire episode. So she keeps yeah. talking a whole big game about revenge and everything, but really her revenge is just standing in the place where laughing. she was buried and she isn't really exacting any vengeance on anyone yeah. yet, the which is, only- I guess, a good thing. Yeah. yeah. The only crime so far is Shaggy and Scooby, like, property crime on the pumpkins. <laughs> Thus far. Straight yeah. up. Like, that's it. Trespass and, like, I don't know, like, neg- nuisance, just, negligence. Yeah, something. destruction like, of property. Like. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the hell, guys? Yeah. That's straight up it. Um, yeah. So... Melissa Wilcox, though, she's yelling about getting her revenge and everything. She then disappears in this green cloud or green puff of smoke. And Vilma goes to inspect the headstone a little bit closer after the witch disappears and notices that there's hot pieces of wire actually sitting on the ground by the oh. uh, by the grave site. And Fred points out the inscription again on the bottom of the headstone noticing it's the same thing that Squire Marley was putting around the Wilcox Mm -hmm. house. And at that moment, in total creeper fashion, Gar Mooney pops out of literally nowhere. (laughs) He just like comes out of the shadows and he's like, yes, the inscription is called the Mark of Mormal. It's a witch's sign, which as I noted before, it's actually the Leviathan cross slash Satan's <laughs> cross, but obviously they could not say that in a children's yeah, show. So, <laughs> we see. so Mooney warns the gang to beware because the witch has risen from her grave and there would be evil deeds done tonight. Which again, mm. they're like, yeah, dude, we've seen her. We already know, but like as far as we can tell, she's just standing around. So I don't know. <laughs> she's trying to trick her evil- <laughs> Yeah, right. And so then he just like kind of slowly backs back into the <laughs> shadows and like oh good point that's it. cool that's it. <laughs> he's dropped into another hole he's been digging it falls yeah <laughs> you just see him like go back to digging and just see like the the dirt like flying out next to them Honestly, they're, that like, would be trying the to plan their next set scariest thing it's a man digging a hole in a graveyard near you <laughs> like oh. as he's digging he sees them run in he's like oh i better go warn them about the witch <laughs> Uh, which yeah also a little sus by the way but whatever Mm -hmm. so naturally the gang does not listen to this old creepy man and they decide to continue their investigation into melissa wilcox's resurrection so vilma suggests that they check the records at the salem witchcraft museum to look for any information they can find on melissa wilcox and the wilcox family now and I mentioned this a bit before, but meanwhile, you know, the gang is here. They're like planning a nice little tourist activity, playing hide and go seek in the graveyard, essentially. Uh-huh. Well, Arlene is entirely alone and without protection. Oh and the God. towns, and meanwhile, the townsfolk have been wholly mobilized and activated and are ready to quote unquote save Salem from the witch's vengeance. Oh no. So the the scene turns to Squire Marley at like the local town council, which is, is like this old like log cabin building. What year is it? Oh my I don't god! No, and Squire Marley is like cheering and shouting to the crowd, 
or I guess the crowd is cheering and shouting to him, whatever. He's like leading them in these chants. Like the witch has taken the form of the Wilcox girl. We got a Caesar. We got They've a learned nothing. Confess. They've learned absolutely nothing. And they they have never picked up a history book. They've clearly never been to the Witchcraft Museum to I was learn say, about is the Witchcraft how... Museum actually like the We've Done Nothing Wrong Museum? <laughs> I'll, I'm going to talk about it in a second. It's oh, kind of no. funny, actually. I would not describe it in that way, though. <laughs> Okay, okay. That way. So um, the crowd is at this point, they're like ravenous, ready to hunt. And it's like actually very disturbing. They're like chanting, like, get the witch. Like they have torches. They're in a mob. They're making their way down the street, ready to find Arlene Wilcox. Oh, no. And then we see the gang arrive at the Salem Witchcraft Museum while Arlene is getting ready to be like, kidnapped, murdered. tortured, murdered, perhaps if history oh, is any indication. And the witchcraft museum though, it's oddly opened and like unlocked at this very late hour on Halloween night. Okay. So naturally the gang walks right in. Rolls, in, yep. rolls right in. And inside, you mentioned before, I wouldn't quite call it a we did nothing wrong museum, but it's also uh-huh. not like a oh, let's learn from our mistakes. Oh, no. Either. <laughs> it's straight up just like a showroom floor of all of the torture devices that were used during the witch trials. <laughs> like kind of just like no clear layout or placement of them to like tell a story. But really just like showing off like, hey, this is what we use. Like, here's a dunking machine. Here's some freaking, what are the, the stocks that we would like put around their feet oh and like keep them chained in. So it's more like a, if you wanted to kill a witch in this day and age, here's how you would do here's it. Here's how you would do it. Perhaps these utensils will be of use later in today's episode. Oh my As- God. <laughs> This town. It is strange. So, okay, the gang, Uh, I I will admit, though, there is a section of the museum that does have the records, like Vilma happened to know, and a bunch of books. But hilariously, like, no one clearly cares about that portion because the books are just, like, kind of, like, loosely piled on a random (laughs) table in, like, the back corner of the museum. The the bulk of the museum is just, like, these massive torture devices with, like, explanations of what they were. So the gang, they start reading through some of these books in the museum, thinking that they might help solve the mystery and that they can find more information about the Wilcox family and Melissa Wilcox in there. And so as they're flipping through the pages of one of the books, they see the same symbol that appeared on the grave and on the signs outside the Wilcox house. And Vilma reads out loud that it's, again, the sign of Mormal, quote unquote, (laughs) for the PG audience in the Uh room. And they say, or Vilma says, that it's supposed to keep a witch from rising from her grave. (laughs) Apparently not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> literally did not work so <laughs> at this same moment fred comes across the wilcox family records in another book mm. noting that it has a family tree going back for generations and interestingly and oddly though fred notices that arlene's birth on the family tree has been scratched out and only replaced with the word gemini so it's like it, it, it's that's some not, like stalker serial it's killer like shit. super weird yes <laughs> it's very strange yes. it's a very stressful episode it's, it's very perfect for halloween yeah so shaggy posits at this point that maybe arlene's birth sign is a gemini which does not explain why uh her name would be scratched out yeah. <laughs> or anything but he hilariously also adds in like personally i was born under a hospital sign ha 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 <laughs> it's 
Uh, shit is good. But Vilma uh, clearly does not have time for any jokes and just like hates Shaggy. So she's like, <laughs> no, Arlene's birthday's in October. She can't be a Gemini. Which, okay. like, yeah, facts so true. It's Libra season right now. She's either obviously a Libra or a Scorpio. Gemini's are born in May and June, whatever, but it's all hot wash anyway. Whatever. Anyway, so a light bulb goes off in the gang, like, in their heads, sorry, not like literally. I was about to ask, I was like, Wait. <laughs> yeah, like, okay. ah, it gets dark. No, a light bulb goes off in Fred and Vilma's heads, and they both realize that the scratched out name on the family tree and the word Gemini are clues. And they decide that they need to get back to Arlene quickly and tell her what's going on before going back to the graveyard to try and trap the witch. Yeah. Like, so Shaggy is trying to murder you. <laughs> just the so you know. Fucking town. <laughs> like someone specifically is trying to murder you. Have you checked the records at the Salem Witchcraft Museum lately, Arlene? <laughs> you may it's have a stalker. Scary. Yeah, dude. Okay. It's scary in there. So at this point, Shaggy is like, uh, well, can we like meet you guys just like at the graveyard? Like, I guess they, they maybe they feel awkward confronting Arlene. Like maybe she <laughs> thinks they're still in the house or something. And she's like, wait you guys weren't here the whole time so they're like can we just like meet you guys oh my God. because yes they want to go trick-or-treating <laughs> and fred's like fine yes meet us back there in an hour whatever yeah. we get it awkward encounter whatever so back in the town though squire marley he's leading this angry torch carrying mob of townsfolk to stop the witch at once before she wreaks her vengeance which again, just standing over her gravesite, whatever. <laughs> and we then see Gar Mooney running to Arlene Wilcox's house and warning her that Squire Marley is on the way with the rest of the town to make okay. her confess, make her confess <laughs> that she's a witch, which as we Yikes. know from our discussion earlier, that is exactly what they typically would do when someone was accused they would essentially beat them into confessing that they yeah, were but okay to Mooney witches. being like hey girl <laughs> get out of here coming. yeah like mm-hmm. uh it's on its way riot's coming <laughs> too late to lock your doors and yeah so arlene's like well i gotta wait for my friends i can't just like leave what if they come back and i'm not girl, here he's like no <laughs> That's basically what he said. He's like, nah, girl, you gotta go. Run for your life. He's trying to tell him, run for your life. Are your friends here now? Where are your friends now? Yeah. No? Get out. Get out. (laughs) Run. And so without a flashlight or a jacket or anything, really, Arlene just like books it out of the house. Oh, okay. And leaves Gar just like behind standing in her living room, like the door's wide open and he's just still standing there like, yeah, get the fuck out, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> save like, yourself well, back to the graves back to the holes my job's He's done here covered in dirt <laughs> like, all right let's go uh-huh. oh Carmen, is such a cool character <laughs> so so uh scooby and shaggy they're trick-or-treating at this point they're like all right we're 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 in action we're getting our free candy and food and shaggy he's just wearing this like brown cloak and kind of like what looks like an undertaker outfit and scooby is back in the witch costume like they are still not reading the room and of course the town is not celebrating the holiday as they are aware that a witch is perhaps on the loose this is how they celebrate salem (laughs) yeah exactly by locking and boarding their doors and yelling at people who knock on their doors asking for treats. So Scooby and Shaggy, they're not well received by the townsfolk as they are trick-or-treating. And the two of them actually run into Arlene as she's running away from this angry mob that has caught wind of her when she was trying to escape her house. And so Shaggy agrees to safely take her to the graveyard to meet up with the rest of the gang. But hilariously, after after Shaggy and Arlene run away, like Scooby, he kind of like is distracted and gets separated from them. Mm -hmm. And so the townspeople catch up to Scooby before they can catch up to uh, Shaggy and Arlene. And they think that Scooby is the witch because he's wearing a witch's costume. (laughs) 
<laughs> They're like, this counts as a confession. <laughs> this is it. She's confessed. She's cast herself into a dog or something. <laughs> oh my God, probably. Yes. She can shape shift. That's what they think because they then capture Scooby. They like, I think they like bag him up and like they drag him off up. to trial. Yeah. Like uh, they have never opened a book in their life. I suppose I or seen a dog before, or I mean, I guess, yeah, or I guess they have. And they're just like, yeah, witches can turn into dogs. I guess when you're so committed to like this ideology, Again, like you will twist and convolt into like any, or yep, anything into makes whatever. Sense. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, well, witches can do whatever. So uh, she turned into a dog. I don't Done. know. Uh, so at this point, Shaggy, he turns around and sees that Scooby's being carried off. And he's like, oh, shit, like, Arlene, you keep making your way to the gravesite. I've got to go get Scooby. <laughs> like, I guess choosing yeah. your dog over. She's like halfway to the graveyard anyway, whatever. Yeah, she knows the way. Keep going. And like, they're distracted. They're not after her oh, anymore yeah, yeah. because they think that they've caught her. So, yeah, go, go meet up with the rest of the gang. I got to go save Scooby. So. Of course, though, once Shaggy closes in on the mob to save Scooby, they're like, oh, look, you're probably one of the witch's helpers or associates. So they just so they just capture him, too. Oh, my God. So now Shaggy and Scooby are both captured. And as you alluded to before, Grace, or as we briefly discussed before, where do they take Shaggy and Scooby to torture and get them to oh confess <laughs> to the witchcraft music? <laughs> um, oh they're like, all right, guys. Oh, my God. Let's dust off these old torture devices. <laughs> we knew we preserved them here in this museum for a sec. They were probably getting like federal funding for this shit too. There's like a, a like a historic museum. <laughs> oh my god! And they're, <laughs> they're like, like, yeah, we perfect, perfect. Let's we've been waiting dust for them this off. day. Exactly. So yeah, they place Scooby and Shaggy into these torture devices that are on display, uh. and. Um, <laughs> Squire Marley, he's like pressing Scooby to confess that he's a witch. And Shaggy is just like hilariously kind of calmly like, dude, he's not a witch. He's a dog. <laughs> Shaggy logic doesn't work. In the it doesn't matter. Here. With it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's the last thing on the list of evidence is logic. Yeah, it's so, not even on the list. And yes, because the squire, he doesn't believe it. He essentially subjects Scooby to this like <laughs> this water torture. It's like a dunking device where he's like strapped into this seat that just like keeps like plopping you in and out of water. <laughs> and I, it like kind of looks like an amusement park ride. Not yeah, exactly. why. Uh, I think it actually is based off of a real torture device, though. So sorry to oh, the ancestors yay. of people who were actually murdered during the Salem witch trials, because I think it did actually. That's actually a thing. It was a bad torture device. Anyway, so anyway. while the, t- <laughs> so the townsfolk are like cheering over this torture, they're like watching it like sport. And Shaggy, meanwhile, while they're all distracted at this dog, this animal c- cruelty tea sure. shaggy just kind of like plops over with his like hands shackled and like squirms <laughs> out of the museum oh nice okay um and so the rest of the gang at this point because they've left there there's so much going on there's a lot of moving parts because everyone keeps splitting up they were at the museum they mm. left the museum and then the mob arrived at the museum right after the gang left anyway so the gang arrives back at arlene's house at this point mm. and they notice that the door is wide open but that arlene is gone so they're like okay well i guess we'll just go back to the graveyard and try to catch the witch okay. then i guess arlene was taken so well <laughs> might as well go trap this witch too late yep great but it works because remember Shaggy told Arlene to right. just meet the gang at the graveyard as well. So they run into Arlene when they get there and they're like, Oh, thank God you're here. Cool. Let's we totally try to knew catch you were not dead. <laughs> we knew yeah. you, we knew you were not dead. And we totally had a moment of silence. So when we thought that maybe you were missing, we didn't just keep moving on with the plan. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. No, no. Shaggy told us you would be here. Where is Shaggy, by the way? And she tells them, uh, yeah, the angry mob took them because they thought that they were the witch. <laughs> And Fred is like confused and rightfully so, because yes. what I just said seems to not make sense at all. <laughs> Correct. But in Salem, Massachusetts on Halloween night, anything goes. Anything goes. <laughs> so 
I mentioned that Shaggy was able to like sneak his way out of the witchcraft museum mid Scooby's torture, but he's still like shackled up into the, like the stocks, the things that are like, you know, wrapped around your, the thing you put your neck and like your hands oh, yeah. in it. It's like the, pr- the pranger, whatever thingy and the stocks yeah. around your legs. And so he, Again, we've talked about Shaggy's athleticism, you know, in our original Scooby-Doo uh-huh. arc. This dude's able to like squiggle or like hop his way with his hands and legs he's like all constrained. Yeah, yeah. And like probably like a track star or something. I don't know. Yeah. But like he's able to do like that all the way from the witchcraft museum back to the graveyard and like, tell yeah, <laughs> where he's able to like tell the gang and Arlene that Scooby is being tortured back at the uh, at the museum yes. and that the townsfolk are trying to get him to confess to witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And hilariously though, while Shaggy's like struggling in these, Fred just like clips him right off. <laughs> Just real quickly, like, boom, like, takes the things off of his hands and feet. Like, are you free now? Like, Fred, it's like, they didn't like lock. this is from, like, the 1700s. Like, this is, like, they're... rotting wood. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it's... work anymore. <laughs> Yeah. And it was like on display in a museum. It's like yeah. they take parts off of it to like preserve it and stuff. Right. It's not like, <laughs> like Shaggy, you could have kicked these off at any time. <laughs> and it's like the, the townsfolk are this committed. They're like reliving the night back in like 1790, whatever, when they killed yeah. Melissa Wilcox. It's yeah. like, dude, you guys realize these are all just props now, right? Yeah. These don't work. These are recreations. <laughs> And so at this point, the gang is like, all right, well, we got to go to the museum, save the good pup, <laughs> set the town, <laughs> townsfolk straight, stop this animal cruelty and torture. Uh-huh. And when they get to the museum, they take this like a, a mannequin of a witch that was sitting on display. Oh, no. <laughs> And they take it up to the second floor of uh, this museum. It's kind of like a log cabin type of situation where there's like an open balcony looking oh, over. Yeah. They take the mannequin up, Grace, and they literally just chuck it off of the second floor balcony onto the town's fault below. I mean, like, okay, imagine like for a second, oh. like point of view switch. <laughs> You're a town's person. You know, life's been hard. My pumpkins have just been <laughs> smashed. I'm looking for revenge. I feel I need some righteous anger to be directed. The squire comes knocking on my door saying it was a witch. I say my pumpkins were destroyed. The squire goes, it was probably the witch. So you get into the mob. You're into uh-huh. the hysteria. Your ancestors have also murdered the witches. This is the most fun you've had. Little Timmy's there with the riot, too. It's the first time you've seen little Timmy smile, smile. since he got on crutches. <laughs> smile with the blood. Hobbling thirsty. his way, using one of his crutches as a torch. <laughs> this is maybe the best holiday you've had in years <laughs> and guaranteed to have for another year so your pumpkins have been destroyed. And then suddenly a potentially witch or dead body flies onto you and smushes little Timmy, your son, next to you. <laughs> Terrifying <laughs> turn of events <laughs> in your riotous, murderous evening. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. Cool. <laughs> so that's, that's exactly what uh, Mystery Inc. foresaw in all of this. <laughs> When they decided to throw the fucking mannequin off the second floor balcony. <laughs> like when I say they just chuck that shit, Grace, like they just straight like yeeted that off the balcony. And yeah, I mean, it did just straight up land on the townspeople. <laughs> Poor little Timmy was probably <laughs> under it. On the bright side, the pumpkin farmer does not need to pay for that leg surgery anymore <laughs> for a little Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> One less mouth to feed. Her <laughs> pumpkin patch pat. <laughs> what is his name now? Yeah, if they don't hire us to like rewrite this or something, there, <laughs> there you guys are missing out. You're missing out. All right. This is this is uh anyway, this is just a normal <laughs> typical Saturday here. So <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh yeah after just like chucking the shit off the balcony the gang they don't even like look down below and confront the crowd they just like run right back out and that gives scooby a chance to just like escape and run oh, okay. out too. <laughs> so, scooby. So, yeah they forget about that they're like now nah, we just want to like go fuck up some townspeople <laughs> <laughs> okay um scooby escapes scooby escapes yes okay. so Great. uh but at this point i guess after they're like the town's folks are like freaking out like oh my god wait she landed on us ah oh, timmy he's dead oh my god whatever <laughs> she <laughs> they, killed him <laughs> they, they realize it's a mannequin and they're like oh shit go chase after those teenagers <laughs> so the mob so the mob does chase after mystery inc uh and follows them back to the graveyard and at this point, I don't know how Fred was able to do it so quickly, but we actually maybe he just uh, mooched off of Gar Mooney because we see him shoulder deep in a hole that he is digging at Melissa Wilcox's grave. So actually, no, Gar Mooney didn't do that. Like, I don't know. Fred is a very good digger. Maybe he should be the new cemetery caretaker. Is Fred grave robbing? <laughs> 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 It would appear so. Uh, and I'm glad you said that because literally my next line here is good lord, they're grave robbing now. But hey, vigilante justice, y'all. Vigilante <laughs> justice. You gotta commit crime to resolve the crime. <laughs> gotta spend money to make money, people. <laughs> Oh, God. Let's go, let's go. Got to get that rap sheet long to prove that we are against crime. <laughs> so Arlene, Velma, and Daphne, they're just like standing over watching Fred while Shaggy and Scooby are looking out for the mob. Mm. And Fred and co, they see the witch running through the graveyard towards them. Ooh. So they quickly put some sticks and some grass over this deep hole that Clever. Fred just dug. And they're like, oh yeah, that witch is in for a surprise. We're going to get her now. And they like hide, they hide behind a bush, which by the way, again, a lawsuit incoming, y'all. <laughs> this is like clear <laughs> assault. <laughs> you cannot like foresee like negligence or something. Like you can't foresee that someone's going to run somewhere and like not warn them that there's like, she's going to break her legs. You purposely <laughs> dug yes. this hole. You did this on purpose. Again, vigilante justice. So uh -huh. I'll save it for later. Never. I just had an <laughs> idea. But anyway, so Fred and them, they are hiding behind the bush, waiting for her, waiting for the witch to run over this hole, this trap. But at the same time, Shaggy and Scooby back at the front of the graveyard, the cemetery, they see the mob approaching from down the road and they run back to uh, Fred and them to tell them that they're coming. But again, in classic Mystery Inc. fashion, aka classic Mystery Inc. fuck up, Shaggy and Scooby <laughs> fall oh, into the trap God that was it. set for the witch. <laughs> and the witch, she like sees them and she's like, oh shit, thank <laughs> you. I almost, I almost, <laughs> yeah, I almost fell into that. <laughs> and so she just like turns around and runs the other way <laughs> before the kids can catch her. But in a clear nod to one of my favorite, like, literary and dramatic devices, the Chekhov gun, <laughs> we see the witch instead fall into the hole that Gar Mooney was randomly <laughs> digging earlier in the evening. <laughs> yes. Yes. He knew. Was, he knew. I was always wondering, like, what is that hole for? It's like, yes. why are they spending so much time showing Gar Mooney digging this hole? The Chekhov gun principle. If they show the gun in the first act, God, then it will use be it. used by what, like the third the or third. something. Yep. <laughs> yes. Amazing. So, amazing. So uh <laughs> at this point, the gang's like, oh cool. We still caught her we anyway. Did <laughs> we did it. I guess. <laughs> and so Squire Marley and Gar Mooney, they catch up with the gang just as they're pulling the witch out of this other hole in the graveyard. Uh -huh. And Vilma explains that the witch isn't actually a witch at all, oh. to which Squire Marley is like, what? She is a Squire witch. Squire Marley's like, don't say that in front of the crowd. We can't. They're, uh, they're going to vote for me in the next election. <laughs> <laughs> it's October. Elections are coming up in November. Uh, damn it. 
<laughs> the midterm election. <laughs> It's where my campaign. Now, when it comes to that, he does have some foresight. <laughs> when it comes to anything else, logic all goes to the wayside. Uh-uh. So Velma explains that the witch, quote unquote, is actually only pretending to be a witch to get the inheritance away from Arlene, her twin what? sister. <laughs> what? That's what Arlene and everyone else says. <laughs> <laughs> what? Arlene is shocked to find out from her dear friend Velma that she in fact has a long lost twin sister only days after losing every other member of her family. And Arlene says, I never knew she existed. Fred chimes in and says, well, yes, we pieced together the clues when we saw the family record that said Gemini, which means twins Uh, that to me is not strong enough of a clue to piece this together but let me go on long lost traumatic history in which you were ripped away (laughs) your twin sister was ripped away yeah or she was ripped away Arlene is a victim here in this story (laughs) yes yes (laughs) So Fred further explains that the missing sister's name had been carefully, quote unquote, blotted out, which again, hilarious, because as I mentioned before, it was like super scratched out, like serial killer style, (laughs) like the sloppiest scratching off or blotting out ever. Like it was so clearly doctored. But anyway, I guess Fred sees that like how traumatized Arlene is about this. And he's like, oh, wow. Oh, shit. She didn't know. We just like told her this. Let me make it seem like this was a very convoluted and cleverly done plot. Like, oh, yeah, no, to the naked eye, you would have never known that the record was altered. Her Fred's just like like slowly backing up into another hole. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, I swear they, this was you it was so clear that like you would have never found this out arlene i swear we really had to do some digging here and it's like no (laughs) dude arlene have you never read your family history ever (laughs) so velma states that this lost sister planned the entire witch hoax to scare arlene out of the town forever and take over her estate i have many thoughts about that she's gonna like take her identity (laughs) They don't say, I guess, I, they imply, no, no, I think they imply that, like, they're going to scare Arlene out of town because they want people to know that Arlene is, like, a witch, or they want people to think that, so, like, the town will know she's gone, so she can't just take Arlene's name again, because they'll be like, didn't we scare you out of town? Right. So, instead, she's just like, yeah, so I guess I'll scare Arlene out of town, and then I'll come back like, oh my god, look, I'm the long-lost Wilcox girl. It's my inheritance oh. now. But, like, look. But if Arlene's it's... still alive, it's still her inheritance. Thank you! This I think the twin me... wanted the town to murder her because they were about to. <laughs> because, look, this is not... This is not the best way. If anyone out here is thinking about stealing an inheritance from a sibling, let me tell you, this is not the best way to go about it. <laughs> okay. Get lawyers this involved. Is, Do it that way. How this, exactly. Because if you're going to scare Arlene out of town, remember, I mentioned before, she's inherited this massive estate, not just the house, but like all of the, the financial assets, like yeah. the lost life insurance policies, the jewelry furniture all that stuff and she's only a teenager if she's gonna run out of town she's not just gonna run with nothing she's gonna take that shit with her or at least like sell the house for the assets so that she can start a new life somewhere she needs to support herself so like you run her out of town you're not gonna get the shit and grace just as you mentioned arlene wilcox is still alive and yes so i suspect they had to make it pg they had to make it family or kid friendly they can't say like yeah we're gonna kill her because then it's like passes on to the next person in the family so they're like yeah they're gonna scare her out of town whatever but again either way it doesn't work because why would she leave all of the possessions behind and then like start from nowhere as a fucking teenager who can't like even get a job properly (laughs) she's still in high school (sighs) <sighs> okay i had to get that lawyerly venting out we don't quit. <laughs> last few lines here literally last three lines on the show. Okay. so fred at this point then points to gar mooney claiming that the witch actually bribed 
him to help her in this crazy scheme. So at this point, they're also saying, ha ha, no, 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 Garamuni, don't you go anywhere. You're in on this too. Velma posits that the wire they found before sitting at uh, the the grave site earlier in the episode was from wiring that Mooney built to make the witch glow. And apparently the weird bubbling stain on Arlene's carpet was acid from the battery she would use for the wiring. Okay. Okay. So like, apparently this was like a car battery though too, y'all, because yeah. this puddle was huge. This was like a massive puddle. <laughs> so she's like <laughs> running around with like a car battery or like giant like generator, <laughs> cackling in the night. <laughs> And also, I guess Gar Mooney, in addition to being a cemetery caretaker, is like low key, like an engineer or something. Yeah, <laughs> like like is able to like, yeah, come up with these like lighting rigs that can attach to like a costume without like her catching on fire. Yeah, stuff. I guess Gar But he could not figure out the acid town. thinking, ah, apparently. Yeah. Or she just, she offered him enough money. Like, look. Mm. I mentioned it before this estate was massive and like it was on a huge plot of land so the Wilcox mm. family was obviously loaded so I'm sure that she was a Gar Mooney's a simple man I'm sure it probably took like not even fifty thousand dollars for yeah. him to like he's give up it. his whole career and like commit these horrible crimes and like yeah. uh, he's like yeah fifty thousand dollars today for this sure So anyway, (laughs) Squire Marley makes a citizen's arrest at this point and decides that Mooney and the witch are off to jail. By the way, we never learn her real name. So we don't know. Yeah, we don't know Arlene's sister's real name. Whoa. They don't say it. They just keep calling her the witch. First of all, rude of them. Yes, very Second rude. Of all, she's a person like, too. Okay. Yeah. What like horrible trauma did she go through when she was like given up by the Wilcox family, who clearly had enough money to raise twins, and like mm-hmm. now this is like her vengeance plot due to whatever traumas she went through. Let me say like two more lines, and then we're gonna wild speculate. Wildly <laughs> so sorry, speculate about her. No, 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 no. That's fine. That's so fine. wild. Yes, there's so much to say. So. He makes the citizen's arrest, carries him away off to jail. And then very hilariously, he just quickly apologizes to Arlene and like, and I guess Scooby for torturing them and like threatening their lives and like possibly Loki killing them, trying to yeah. kill them. He's just like, sorry, guys. And then walks away. <laughs> um, and yeah, so back at the Wilcox house, Arlene, she thanks the gang for helping her out. And uh, yeah, they like get to enjoy the rest of their Halloween. And that is the end of the Halloween, I, I think maybe the first Halloween episode of uh, Scooby Did. <laughs> this could have been a horror movie. To Switch a Witch, by the way, is the name of that episode. To switch, <laughs> right? It could have been. Uh, to Switch a Witch, season two, wow. uh, episode two, watch wow. on HBO Max, came out in 1978. Yes. Also, I like to think that Marley, <laughs> like when he was like being like sorry about that, at the same time, he also gave them like a little like campaign like brochure. Like, don't be sorry, vote for Marley. <laughs> <laughs> and then carted them off. He like looks and <laughs> like, mm, you kids are pretty good on your feet. I could use some fresh young interns in my, on my <laughs> campaign. <laughs> it's like, sir, you just tried to kill half of us. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll, I'll give you a button too. <laughs> he like pokes a button on him. Do I have your vote? Him a little bit. Well, <laughs> I tried not even to kill you, but I didn't kill back. you. Oh, true, true. Wow. Well, oh, um, yeah. yeah. I so, feel like, yeah, truly, I don't know, obviously, enough. Like, I can't name a single horror movie director since I don't watch them, but I'm sure you could. But like, this fully plot, like, could be a horror movie in which, like, there's like a whole town rioting trying to kill someone with like a super evil witch. And then the plot twist is the the mm-hmm. twin and like whatever horrible life she yeah. went through. But it's like yeah. trying to murder her twin, like I'm full see, like, on horror movie. At, at a certain point during writing this episode, I was like, God, I want to just keep going. I want to like wildly speculate about this twin sister and have this whole backstory and then talk more about the int- like the political intrigue with Squire Marley. Clearly, yep. like, like you're li- like, I, I'm like, hey, if Scooby Doo ever did another like animated, you know how they do the animated movies, whatever. Yeah. Like Cyber Chase and all that. I was like, this would definitely be like, there's a lot of good source material here. Dude, straight with this up. episode. Like, 
because can we let's talk about this this Wilcox family too for just like a really quick like what you noted it so perfectly they clearly had enough money yeah to have another kid so I I actually really can't tell if like maybe Arlene was adopted like maybe Arlene was the lost child no because no 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 because then the twin she, wouldn't get the inheritance because she would yeah listen what if this is why there should be a movie yes but speculate please let me hear what your thoughts. if mm-hmm. Mrs. Wilcox Arlene and the witch's mother um the getting pregnant with with twins situation also sorry about the dogs in the background they're very excited about this episode too exactly (laughs) um what if gar mooney was the father Mm. and they were like i gotta get rid of like one of these kids like twins don't run in my actual mr wilcox's family so like Mm -hmm. it's a little sketchy if i have twins gotta get rid of one of them and that's why gar mooney was so willing to help he was the one who wrote gemini because he was like mrs wilcox like betrayed me we were supposed to have these twins together she was gonna leave mr wilcox Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Since okay, I like this. And so, building off of what you said before, the twin did actually want to kill Arlene. She didn't just want to scare her out of town because she needed to yeah. make sure that the inheritance actually passed over. Garamuni, though, being the actual father, he couldn't let that happen. So he had, even though he was in on the plot with the witch, he was like, "Okay, I won't let you. I won't let you kill her. Like, Murder. you do what you want." So that's why he like went rogue slightly and like went yes. and warned Arlene, like, "You got to go. You got to get out of town. She's yeah, gonna kill leave. you if you don't." Because he was like, "Okay, I do get my cut and get the cut of the inheritance. Yeah, and this way, both of my kids still survive, even yes. though I will never see one of them ever again. Probably, yes. yeah." I like that. Boom. For sure. Boom. Yeah. I also think that this horror scene that you'll direct or horror movie you'll direct one day, I think that co-direct scene. We, we, we will co-direct this. That's too scary for me. I'll just write, I'll just write some of the script, but not be involved in the cool. rest. Call me an executive producer so I don't have to really be involved um, at all. You just scary. say, yeah, we were just so inspired for this. We were really inspired. You do all the interviews. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. I can do buzzwords. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the opening scene, because we really need to like paint Arlene as kind of like, you know, like she, even though she comes from this rich, like elite family that clearly this town also like doesn't really like that. She's Mm -hmm. like trying to be part of the community. Like she is a good person. I think the opening scene is actually her helping little Timmy out, like (laughs) planting the pumpkins for the year and being like, it's okay, little Timmy. We'll raise the money for your knee surgery in no time. Uh, <laughs> look at all these beautiful pumpkins. They're going to sell so well on November 1st. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You two, you all will finally have a proper meal. Yeah. And then the witch has to um, haunt yeah. little Timmy's funeral because that has to be a whole scene. <laughs> oh, that's right. Timmy died. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. I cannot wait to direct this scene with them (laughs) chucking a mannequin off of a balcony onto a crippled boy. (laughs) And pumpkin patch Pat being, no, no, no. (laughs) this witch killed my son. (laughs) <laughs> they like think that the witch possessed the mannequin. Yeah, also, I like exactly. how you, I like how you said like you're not sure if you if if what was thrown on you is a mannequin or a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> like all you know is your dip. son was also smushed like a pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, that fateful day. That's on the headstone. <laughs> Instead of like the wishes symbol, it's like a smosh, smush pumpkin. Smush pumpkin. <laughs> he was smushed like the very pumpkins that he loved watching his father grow. <laughs> Perfect. Oh man. Well, wow. Anyway. Great, so. great job. That was a Thank wild you. episode. I loved it. Thank I was you. Very stressed Thank out. you. Um it's funny. I actually thought about doing this episode during our original. Uh, mm. Scooby-Doo episode arc and I'm very glad that we didn't I don't think at that time yes. we had any idea that we would do this like fun Halloween theme thing yep but I'm very glad that I did not do it then saved it Good for call. now because it's got everything Halloween needs it's got some yep. retreating some witches 
spookiness, crime, grave robbing, dot, 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 trespass, <laughs> which is mannequins Pumpkins. flying off of balconies, like uh, I guess house, house of wax type things, <laughs> torture. So yes, wow. and of course Great it job. has Scooby-Doo and Mystery Inc. Yes. Thank you. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed this episode today. We have another fun one coming from Grace next week. Another mm-hmm. Halloween themed classic cartoon episode. So until then, though, Grace, who should they tell about this wonderful podcast? Uh, I think you should find your local witch and let her know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, be like search on Wicca. I'm sure there's. There's yeah. a chapter near you. <laughs> yes. Find your local Wiccan and be like, look, they sided with the witch in this episode. Kind of. I mean, I think we did. We were at minimum neutral. But yes, I think exactly. rhetorically, we're it's clear which side we're on here. I think with <laughs> Melissa Wilcox, IRL, we sided with mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. so yeah um yeah go find your local uh wiccan coven and uh tell them to listen to this episode they're the lost demo we're trying to reach um, yeah we gotta we gotta yeah. broaden our horizons yep. yeah and then who else hmm to that extent i guess if you're going to tell a witch also maybe tell oh no dang we did that last week didn't we tell a satanist yeah did we do that i don't remember yeah. Darn. Okay. Tell a well, tell a wizard. Yeah. yeah. Find a wizard. They exist too. Or sorcerer. Yeah. yeah. Go tell them. Call them up and uh conjure them, perhaps. Oh, nice. And uh let them know, like, hey, we 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 listen to this podcast that talks about things like adjacent to your line of work. You may be interested. Yeah. Your your female or Wiccan cousins may <laughs> have something to say about this. So enjoy. Yeah, get it all in there. Uh, And then, great. Until next week. Bye. See y'all soon. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Saturday Morning Mysteries. If you enjoyed this episode, please share, rate, review, leave us a like, and drop a comment. We post episodes every Saturday and bonus tune tangents whenever we feel like it. So please subscribe so you don't miss the shenanigans. And if you want to follow us on YouTube, click the bell under the YouTube subscribe button to receive notifications when new videos are posted. And if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we have no idea what you're listening to us on. So just hit the big subscribe button on whatever app you're using. We, we believe in you. Give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Satmorn Mist, all the abreeds, and let us know if you have any episode or show requests by emailing Saturday Morning Mysteries at gmail.com. Thanks to Jenna Kendall for the logo design and to Ava Sakiki for the music used during this week's episode. See y'all groovy kids next week on Saturday Morning Mysteries.